episode number two and we're rolling and we've got a very very special guest here today but before we get into him we've got a little mentions to do we got a little shout out to do we've got a sponsorship and it's actually not an ordinary sponsor it's none of this mobile legends bullshit or one of these games it's actually something legitimate something amazing something beautiful it's kura kura beer as you can see over here two amazing cans we've got the island pale ale which is delicioso we've got the lager which is another amazing beer um my guests will actually confirm how good the beer is because he yes. is not that i've drunk too many of them but <laughs> we'll get into you in a minute mate hold on <laughs> but yeah Quick, quick little shout out to Kura Kura Beer. Thank you so much for sponsoring this episode. If you want one of the freshest and best beers in Bali, everything's going to be in the description. The links to their website, the links to their Instagram. And if you have the code Kaizai, or if you use the code Kaizai, you actually get 10% off all beer orders through the website. It's only deliveries in Bali at the moment, but use the code Kaizai, 10% off all the beer cans. And we're not actually done there. If you want a brewery tour, you don't get 10% off. You don't get 15% off. You actually get 20% off with the code Kaizai. It's big. So if you want a tour with free flow beer, for the whole day a lovely barbecue by private chef of the beers brewery you know where to go check all the links in the description thank you so much to kura kura beer uh moving on we're actually on spotify as well now so if you're in the gym if you're skiing if you're playing tennis if you're on a run and you want to listen to the best podcast in indonesia follow us on spotify as well as buzzsprout but i think that's just links but spotify check us out there follow us there um and i just want to say thank you so much to everyone who's commented liked showed us love so far on the podcast you're place in my heart thank you so much uh, and what else we got to say before moving into our guest here um, I think that's it I think we've run through everything oh no Merry Christmas to all of you Merry Christmas and Happy New Year's by the way because this will be aired and will be edited and will be posted out live when it is 2021 so Pretty Merry cool. Christmas Happy New Year to everyone hope 2021 is treating you better than 2020 did that won't be too hard to do honestly <laughs> But let's get into it. Very, very special guest today. Um, not only just a guest here, but a very, very good friend of mine, Mr. George Benson. It's nice for you to say something nice about me for once. <laughs> plus one, plus one. Kai. Plus one for Can you, have Mr. A plus George. One for Welcome on the podcast, mate. Thank it's a pleasure me. to have you. Thank you. Uh, so just quick introduction on who you are, what you do, uh, just so the viewers know, you know, I mean, where you're from, how you, what you do, basically, just because if there's someone yeah, watching this and yeah. they have an idea, maybe they don't know who we are. I don't know who yeah. doesn't, but nah, it's, it's, it's quite funny. I look at the camera and I say, it's Kai and I have a very funny relationship. Mm. You know, like those friends where it doesn't matter what's going on. Like you just look <laughs> and you just laugh. <laughs> so like, as much as I'd like this to be like really good Civilized, chat, it's difficult. It I need to left. ease my way into it. Oh, wait, I know something that can help you out actually. Fresh Kura Kura beer. It's man. a good idea, bro. How about we get it's into it? It's a very good idea. It's very kind of you to give me two of my favorites too. Uh, Look nice at this. Little, hang on, nice next little... to the mic. Oof, look at that. That's nice. Cheers, a little bit mate. of froth out the top. Cheers to that. Mm. Genuinely though, like Delicious. I know obviously it's not the guest job to talk about the sponsor, but this is actually my favorite beer here. Okay. So I'm glad that this is the sponsor of this podcast. Amazing. Shout out to Kura Kura again, mm. Kaizai. Code in the description. Go follow. You know all that good shit. So Absolutely. Into you, Mr. Benson. Quick, into quick, me. quick introduction. Who you are, what you do. Yeah. I, it's, not, it's very weird with these things because like even though I know who I am and I've been alive for 26 years and I know my name's George Benson like, when someone puts you on the spot it's like tell me a bit about yeah, yourself yeah, yeah, like 100%. oh god like, you, you get to a little what do I say place. what do I say no I'm um, mainly been known as a YouTuber for the mm. last nine years actually was my anniversary on Boxing Day for my first YouTube ever YouTube veteran. video yeah I'd say like say. not quite like OG OG oh come on mate you're an OG but in terms of like how many people there are doing it now like OG. I'll give you the OG status, man. Come on. I'll take it. I'll take it. Don't be so harsh on yourself. Yeah. Been doing like that kind of stuff now for nine years. Bit of Instagram here and there. Like to talk about football on Twitter quite a lot. Like mm -hmm. living in Bali. Been here now for nearly four years on and off. Yeah. That's pretty much me, man. Yeah. yeah. Just so basically, he's just a YouTuber. Not just a YouTuber. A very good YouTuber, actually. Um, with multiple channels, not just one. You've got a lot of channels. They're all yeah. doing bits. You're focusing mainly now on one, which is focused around Chelsea Football Club. Yeah. Our truly. Yeah, Chelsea. that's where that's how another similarity we have. Initially. Chelsea it's fans. the love for Chelsea Football Club. Um, but yeah, let's move into something. The first time we met, let's talk about that. And what brought you to Bali? First time. So we're I gonna met. we're gonna start off with that. Who you are and how our relationship basically. Yeah. So, so you moved I, to Bali how long ago? I moved here officially. I decided I was gonna stay here back in April. Uh -huh. Like I think a lot of people, particularly now people that we know here, both of us had like a phase of time where they would come here and spend a couple of months here. Yeah. It's a very like expat driven place and people 100%. come here for like an extended holiday. Exactly. You know, you can take your, if you're working online, it's a very good place to be Bali. Yeah. 
So for me, I've been coming here on and off since 2017. And I, the first time I came was like a very sporadic decision. I, one day, one of my friends said to me, I'm going to Bali next week, you want to come? Looked at the calendar, had nothing to do. At the time, I was doing travel videos. Uh-huh. He was a travel vid- video maker as well. So I just thought, what a great idea. What an opportunity. Go. That's the thing, yeah. spontaneous events like that are the best. It always ends up in the best results. Yeah, so now yeah. you're a resident here in Bali. He's living here. Not officially. Not officially. Okay, working not on officially. it. Working, working on, it. on it, but he is legal. <laughs> but yeah, he's, so you've been here for three years now on and off. Yeah, it'll be four, yeah. four years at the end of next month. Yeah, and would you say that's the best decision you've made in your life so far? One of, not maybe Ooh. the best, but one of? I think it was like, Bali's the kind of place where if you invest yourself into the environment that it is, you can actually receive yeah. so much more for yourself than I think any other place I've ever been. That's a very good, uh, and how do you say that, Anal- analytic? Anal- uh, and that, analysis. So I don't know if it's an, yeah, analysis, of, I wouldn't say no, it's an analogy, because but it's like- you get a lot of people that come here and they don't respect the island. So what you yeah. put into the island will give you back three yeah, times yeah. back in better, like for yeah. that, like 100%. And I think the key thing for anybody who's never been here or wants to come here is that there is anything you can imagine that you can do here, you can actually do it. 100%. You know, so like if you want to come here and party and that's what your yeah. your motive I is, then the you first can do thing that. that. The first time I met you and we actually had a good chat and we were getting close, I said to you, mate, like, it's very easy to get lost here. Yeah. And you've taken that like on your shoulder and you've done it very well, in yeah. my opinion. You've you've balanced the perfect workflow and the perfect enjoyment of your life here. Yeah, yeah. Because it's very easy to just go off the rails and party, not in a bad way, but just not being productive. Yeah. As productive as the scene is here, it's very easy to go right, like left, you know? I did track. that though. I did do like the crazy part. You kind of have to though to realize, accident. you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, yeah, You yeah, kind of yeah. have to. But you've done, you've done a good job of balancing it, I must say. Compared I to think a lot so. of other people that's yeah, come yeah. here, and you know they've they've not really respected it like they should have, and it's the island shown what it can do if you don't respect it. Yeah, yeah, but I think it's the same with anything, you know. When you give somebody like the full freedom to yeah. be like, well, I can go and like have a beer for a pound yeah, at the yeah, bar, yeah. and I can have ten of them, and yeah. it's like not going to eat away at my holiday budget or uh-huh. my living budget. It's like okay, you, you can get <laughs> and when there's a beautiful sunset, like everything Every night. is set up to derail you, but it's also so easily available to put you on a track of concentration, focus, yep. drive, you know? Exactly. And I think determination. Yeah. And I think with Bali, like that's the main place that I've ever been to that has kind of allowed me to see this. Mm-hmm. You know, I can it's have this crazy you, part of my life. I can have this work part of my life. I can meet really cool, interesting people like yourself. Yeah, thank you. And then we, you know, th- those connections lead to great conversations. It leads to development, you know? Opportunity. And I think, yeah. People look at Bali sometimes and they think, oh, you're going to Bali to find yourself. Like, you're going to come back <laughs> yeah, all spiritual bollocks, and all this yeah. stuff. And the thing is, like, I used to think I didn't understand spirituality. I didn't understand that kind of thing. Uh-huh. But it is that's another thing that is so, it's relevant here, you yeah, know? And it's open. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's a part of everyday life. Yeah, yeah. Spirit, Everywhere you go, yeah. like, you can meet somebody who can open your eyes to something. Exactly. I think that's why I chose to live here, yeah. you know, because it's... The flow here is like never ending uh-huh. and it's beautiful. it's beautiful. I love it. I couldn't agree with you more, mate. hundred percent. So that, that, that moves us on to basically uh, the craziest memory so far that you've lived, that you've uh, like occurred, let's say, in Bali. Craziest. It could be good, it could be bad. It's whatever comes to your head first. I Something think, crazy that's mm, happened to you and you've been like, you know what, blimey. <laughs> I think like, no, it really does it's tie back into what life. we just said. Like I had a bike accident in March, 2017. No, 2018, 2018, it's all a bit of a blur. And um, that was a really bad one. Like yeah. I hit a brick wall, smashed my head open, smashed everything, like face, arms, legs, couldn't walk, couldn't do this, couldn't do that. And that was all down to my like irrational stupidity. Yeah, and when was this? 2018, March. Okay. March. So a year in. Yeah, 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 literally a year. I feel like everyone that's moved twice. to Bali goes through that crash. There's always that one crash that happens. Because if, if yeah. you're not familiar with Bali, it's, it's motorbikes everywhere. It's cars. It's not like the Western side of the world where, you know, it's quite formal on the roads. It's, it's basically a free for all. Yeah. <laughs> so if you know yeah. what you're doing, you're safe. But if you don't, there's idiots on the road. You can like, yeah, a lot of people die, let's say, like for the viewers, I don't know what's the road situation like in Bali. But yeah, so I feel like everyone that's moved here or comes here does go through that. That like pinnacle crash where it's like you know what I need to like actually not take the piss about the road and like yeah. it's a serious thing <laughs> like yeah. I've had a lot of like I had a friend I unfortunately passed away from that like at a young age so that for me was just an eye opener yeah and like 
yeah, that it's not it's not a good thing. But if you're if you're aware and you do your right thing, you wear your helmet always, you're good. I honestly yeah, think. no, you got to take it seriously. Yeah. And for me, I don't think I did until that moment. I was like, just like we were just talking about, yeah. when you get into like these bad habits, it's very easy to continue with them uh -huh. because it's fun and it's like exactly. Yeah, it's the some, last thing you think yeah, of, yeah. you're not getting on the bike thinking like, oh, I'm going to crash. Otherwise, you wouldn't be driving the bike. If that's you what, know what you what think, I mean? you never get one. You just take a car everywhere. Uh, like immediately. Driving a car you're, here is a nightmare as well. You're stuck on it. takes forever. To yeah. get to A to B for on a bike would be like two minutes. On a fucking car, it would be like 45 an hour. So that's yeah. why cars are kind of avoided here. Yeah, it is a, a good thing way. to have though. Yeah. And nights out, let's say a car is, is not bad. Yeah, yeah. But I think that experience in itself kind of... It was the first time in my life I've ever felt like I could and should have died. Yeah, which see, is that's like, what I was trying to get at with the question. Like so, that yeah. type of memory that's got you like fuck. Yeah, like, yeah. It's uh, would you say it's stuck with you for the rest of your life? This oh, time? absolutely, 100%, yeah. absolutely. Because I've never been that like scared and had no idea what was going on. Like I was completely. Do you remember concussed. what happened? Uh, yeah, it, like to an extent, I skidded on a load of wet sand and hit a brick wall. Wasn't wearing my helmet. Head first, knocked out. Friend came and found me 45 minutes later because oh, I hadn't hell. got home. But I had a bleed on my brain, went and had scans. I could see like the scan of my brain. And when oh, you see no. like this Ooh. big light in the middle of your brain, it's not like, oh, look how smart you are. The light's turned on. <laughs> your brain is bleeding. Like, yeah, and that is not good is at not all. This is not good. It's no. very serious. That is like, very, anything to do with your brain and yeah. that is, 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 yeah, is yeah. not good. So that was like a, a wake up call wake for up everything, call. you know, mm. like... How fortunate I am to have family and friends who care about me, who are calling me every five minutes, worried sick about what yeah. I've done. It made me like appreciate my environment more. Hundred percent. I started like, and the journey that I took was so stupid. It was a thirty-second bike journey that could have been walked in five minutes. You see, that's the thing. You know, these accidents tend to happen in scenarios where you least expect them. Yeah. Like some, like you said, you could have easily walked there. But yeah. you decide to take your bike. And you think these big accidents are happening when you're driving from like the <coughs> north of the ba Bali to the south in these long distance journeys. On the but big no, roads. Nah, it's nah. never like that. Well, it is. But it's it's 80% of the time from A to B from like your house to the shop, let's say. Yeah. When you least expect it. Yeah. No, right, I think enough just about think... bike crashes, I think. We've, we've, yeah, we've, it can get into a dark like, little rabbit hole this video, <laughs> you know, this, this we've episode. So we've established, wear your helmet. You've learned your yeah. lesson, which is good. That Shit was the happens. biggest one for me for like awareness. But I think in terms of like good memories, I collect them all together and say this year, you know, oh, we, really? Perfect. I've been here during COVID, you yeah. know, like the majority of tourism has left the island. It was yeah. me and maybe a, 10, a couple of 10,000 others. And we've kind of got to experience what Bali is like exactly. for someone like you, Kai, yeah. who has grown up here, uh -huh. who lives here. It's a completely I'm, different thing, huh? Totally different. How much bro. better is it? It's incredible. <laughs> it's amazing. Business wise, no. <laughs> but, Bus yeah. Which yeah. is not a good thing. But, but socially, socially, in terms of and the living, memories that have oh, been created amazing. like that, it's, it's been incredible. Yeah, you know, is. like the, the the depth of friendship you can build when you're somewhere like this, where whether you're here to work or not, but social is still a very key element of living here. You 100%. Know? So, like, I think the depths of some of the friendships I've created this year for people that I've known for like maybe nine, 10 months. It's will last a lifetime. Yeah, I can say the same absolutely. thing, honestly. 100%. It's, it's just been an overall great year f for social life. Yeah. Like, when you see the rest of the world going through all this shambolic fucking, I don't even know what to call yeah. it, man. You can only be grateful. And yeah. to have what we've had this year, we've got to be grateful and have gratitude and say, you know what? We are lucky. So we are lucky. Very lucky. And people don't really understand. Nah, they don't. Like, unless you're, there's only so much we can say, yeah. like, to these microphones and to one another. It, it doesn't like, it doesn't, the you little bits that people don't <laughs> see, nah, nah, like, nah. It's you can't yeah. explain how good it's been yeah, actually. You can't. And if you sometimes feel bad because it's like well, every everyone everywhere is complaining. Yeah. I like we can still really? go to the bar, we can still go to beach clubs, we can still hang out at each other's houses, exactly. villas, like madness, bro. Madness, madness. We are a little island away from the rest of the world. I must say, it for is sure. a little a little hack. It yeah. is a little life hack, that's for sure. All right, so switching switching lanes here, moving into um, switching lanes, content driven. Oh, stuff. okay. Something you're very good at, I must say. So, what content did you start with and how did it change over time? Yeah. What was the process for you about learning and basically growing and like becoming a content creator, which you really like doing stuff you really enjoy? Because I'm sure when you start doing content, majority of the time, it doesn't stay the same for the next five years. Yeah. You're constantly growing, you're constantly evolving, and your content is. 
So what would you say is what content did you start with and how has it evolved to what it is now? Through like, is it through you finding happiness in your content? Is it you finding views? Is it just you doing overall what you enjoy? Yeah. How did the process change from when you started to what you're doing now? I think taking what you said about switching lanes, let's just imagine like, uh, it's good that this is filmed so that we can see this. Like imagine there's two lanes that we're discussing right now. Yeah. Like two fingers, two, two horses running in a straight line. Yeah. When you're a kid and you're a boy and you're learning the world, you, you love certain things and you want to do more of it and more of it and more of it. And then as you get a little bit older, you then start to realize that actually there's other things that are important. Studying, yeah. like... I don't know, learning to write properly reading. or reading or yeah. doing something else. And then when you get into adulthood, you start to forget what it's like to be in love with everything that you do when you're a boy and you're a kid. You kind of, it's opposite. When you're yeah. young, you're trying to be like, I want to be an adult and you forget how to be yeah, a kid yeah. really. And then when you're an adult, you're like, fuck, I want to be doing that. Uh, exactly. What a kid's doing. <laughs> exactly. But it's, it's very important. And I think a lot of people don't either know about this or don't want to know about this, but to be in touch with like your childlike state is key oh, to key. enjoying your it's life forever 100%. is an absolute yep. key thing. I'm only 26, but I know that's going to no. be what I talk about when I'm 50. Exactly. But going back to the content thing, like when I started it, I was in a transitional phase between being like a teenager, like old boy who then knew I had responsibility to find a job. How old were you job. when you started doing YouTube? 17. 17, all right. So it was like uni time. Yeah. You know, I'm either going to go exactly. and study and get a degree and get a job and work. Traditional or, traditional route in life. Yeah, yeah. I say. Or give something else a go. And for me, like YouTube, when I started it, was just me doing that boy-like fun, yeah. look how much fun I'm having stuff. Like Which is I, a good thing. That's how you yeah, should yeah. start because it's, it's what you're enjoying and people can see that as we spoke in the last episode. Yeah, yeah. Like it's... It's very key to do that, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. hundred percent. No, that's how, I, that's how I really got into it. I, I watched people's content mm -hmm. and in, realized how much I enjoyed watching it. So I was like, hang on a minute. Like, I'm not really doing very much yeah. with myself. Like, I play a bit of tennis, play a bit of football, study a little bit, but I'm not, I don't care about it. Like, I don't care about business management. Like, mm -hmm. I'm doing it because I feel like I should. You should, yeah. So I started making these videos not even knowing if it was going to go anywhere, no, no real expectations of it. But like after about a year, I think I went to my first convention, YouTube convention. Uh -huh. And when I got there and I saw like all of these people that I've been watching and I saw that they're actually real people. They're not just behind a screen and a keyboard, That's like making games. In your, in I'm like, hang yeah. on a minute. Like if I really put my mind to yeah. this, I'm getting better. Like I'm not great. I'm not any different to them. Yeah, I'm like, better. I'm if just anything. an average guy, yeah. like who's enjoying this so flipping much. And if I really put my time and energy into this, it can become something. You know, yeah. like I could be the one coming to these conventions, and people are coming up to me the same way I'm coming up to these people. Yeah. You know, that's I crazy. Just, though. Yeah. you see, you see that, and then you actually accomplished it. So hats off to you, man. For yeah, doing that. yeah. Like it was. It started off with gaming, which is, I guess, very typical for a lot of teenage boys in 100%. the world. Like we all sit there in our rooms, like playing video games. With, 17 years old. But look at the gaming industry now. It's it's insane to see what like Massive. industries have done. Like 100 Thieves, Face Clan. Like, yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they're the top industries in the world, I have to say now. If you yeah. see the brand endorsements and what Face Clan are doing as a movement and as a company, it is amazing. To yeah. see what a, a friend group started off, like you said, just in their room fucking playing games as you do. Yeah. But the only difference is turning it on and speaking to a live audience through Twitch or through YouTube Live or through whatever you're doing. Yeah. And to see where that's brought them in the world and the impact yeah, they yeah. have on our society is insane. Yeah. I think the most interesting thing is when I started it, it was still very new. Yeah. There wasn't really people building and forging like mainstream careers from it. Like you look at some examples now, people like maybe KSI, the Sidemen. These guys yeah. went from doing exactly what I started doing and everyone started doing to becoming like household names now, yeah. particularly in the UK and pretty much all over the world. And I think for me, it was more of a case of when I was growing up, I wanted to be a football commentator. So mm -hmm. I, I knew that if I got to where I wanted to be when I was a child, I would have ended up being on camera or behind yeah. a microphone like so this So you already anyway. knew this was the route I needed to That's go and I it really could end up there. To do. Man, you still yeah. could do it, I'll be honest with you. I, you I'm know, not, bro, I'm you not just what? saying that. The crazy diversion, but like, I don't even think I'd want to do that more than what I'm doing now. Because you're enjoying it Because that much. the best thing about how my career's gone in those nine years is the older I've got and the more I've gone into it, the more freedom I've got. Yeah. So like, I when I went from gaming and comedy, my interest for, for a consumer was travel. 
So when I was doing these gaming videos, I'm watching Travel people videos. traveling because so I, I didn't want to just be lot. gaming, gaming, yeah, gaming. Yeah, 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 yeah. I had to have another interest because that's how I am. You know, I, I get bored very easily. I change my focus. Oh, I'm exactly like you, mate. All the time. I, I start to. a project, I get to the top of it, and I'm like, you know what? Next, next one. And next I'm going to get to the top of that new. one, and I'm like, next one. Instead yeah. of holding that project and elevating, because you can always get better. You get to the top, but you're not really at the top, are you? You're just at the top of that sector. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And you get yeah, to the yeah, next yeah, sector, yeah. and you can go to the top of that one. Jump and into another lane. Going. Exactly. Let's go. I like, I like the thing. <laughs> but no, like from there, it went to. I got so bored of seeing these people going out and living their lives and having fun, traveling the world, yeah. seeing places that I've watched on National Geographic. And then again, it was like, like bold moment. I can actually I can do, do that. that now. I've got yeah. freedom financially because I've made enough money to be able to book flights, hotels yeah. now. So let's go do this. And then like, that's when I first ended up coming here. Yeah. Because it was like, well, it Number makes one total spot sense. To travel. Yeah, it's yeah. like one of the most desired places to come to. Back in 2017, it was like, there were people making videos here, but it was still no, like it wasn't very really, new. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't yeah. anything high end. It wasn't anything like yeah. top notch. It was just these random people that would call themselves bloggers, bloggers, but not really at that element of making top quality videos and actually yeah. travel videos. But now you get a lot more of them. There isn't that yeah. many, I think, as there should be. Because if you think about it, like the name Bali has is this exotic getaway place where you come and you take pictures with monkeys and fucking yeah. climb mountains and you know yeah and then we went getting... to we went to flores and did like all of that stuff yeah. you know oh that's I think amazing a couple that's of nice. my videos didn't go viral they, they did very well but my friend who came here so it was very different like i did daily vlog style videos so yeah. we went for four days i did four videos yeah he did one from the whole trip and you could see what yeah but it was like his went viral he's got nearly a million views yeah but the difference in the quality of the content was just the depth of the perspective. Yeah. So like, I went into a lot of detail every day. Every day. And that he drains did more you. of like when you a, daily vlog, I haven't done it myself, yeah, but just bro. from hearing like how it is, it's not easy. Yeah, I, I did it for two years and I think I missed though. three days. And that's because wow. it was over Christmas one year. Yeah. I was so sick. Of it. Like I didn't even I get out of bed family. really on Christmas day. So I was just like, well, <sighs> I mean, there's only so much of this flipping duvet cover you, you're gonna wanna see, let alone anything else, you know? So, yeah, in terms of like the growth of me as a creator, I feel like it's always been about focusing on what makes me excited every day. Like, there's a mosquito on my nose. <laughs> Did you order him? Did you send him over it? It's a special guest, mate. Special guest, like Derek, <laughs> Derek the plant, the everybody. This is, this we got is my a new agent. addition to the little studio here. Agent Derek, making sure he doesn't ask me any dodgy questions. <laughs> no, I think it's, for me, even now, like I'm... I'm doing the football channel, yeah. George Benson football channel. I hopefully think you, one day. with that, with your football, have really found a very, very clean avenue with something you yeah. have very good knowledge about. You're spoken very well about. You have, have, like I said, knowledge, and you just overall, I think you found your lane in that, in yeah. that, in that, in that football. Yeah. And that could, like you said, lead to being a commentator. I think, but if you don't want to yeah. do that anymore, like. And I think it complements my personality the most. Yeah, because, 100%. Like, I, like we've already discussed, like I'm very much, I get so bored. And it, it's with everything in life. Like I, yeah. I need to be stimulated all the and time. football's like this, you know, it's, it's not the same thing. No, nah, but bro, like, <laughs> I, I disagree. Like for me, the only thing that stimulates me, no matter whether it's good, bad, it's football. is football. Yeah. Like I, I can, know I can, to I the day I right. die, it will be my number one love. Yeah. My number one passion, it will never go yeah. unless COVID kills it again which it kind of which has. it could <laughs> and it might be about to again but like i know creatively there hashtag is no the limit to what i can in. do <laughs> yeah hashtag get the fans, hashtag get the fans actually no because then i might have to leave and go home <laughs> <laughs> maybe not like, keep, hey, keep that's another journey that will be quite good yeah it would be fun but i think for me it's like i want to work in football for the rest of my life yeah 100%. like doing something along these lines yeah. whether it's we'll on, get more into that later on yeah whether it's tv up. or youtube or the next yeah. youtube like I know that's what I want to be doing. Yeah. At least for now, it might change, but I don't see it happening, yeah. you know? It's your religion. Football yeah, is your it religion. Is. It it's is mine religion. as well, to be honest with you. Right, so we've, we've, we've spoken about your content and how it's changed. So would you say as a graph, basically, this would be your content life in your career? It's basically going up, positively. Um, depends, what, depends what we mean, like, in terms it's of It's constant like, growth, which is good. Yeah, like, in terms of my definition of yeah. what growth and success is, yes. Yeah. 
because I'm keeping on a steady track of like doing whatever I want, uh, which, which is, is my deep, lifestyle. Yeah. Every day for the last six years has been, I get up and do whatever You're I want. You're not relying on the big man to be like, this yeah. is what you're no doing. No one's telling me what five. to do. Yeah. It's me and me only, yeah. you know? So people like sometimes define success online as like the number of views. I purely see that as a vanity metric. Yeah. You know, I know and I've spoken to many people who are very successful in terms of these metrics, these numbers, but they wish they were doing something else. Something else. Yeah, like exactly. they, when I was doing travel videos and they were still gaming and they were getting like 50 million views a month and uh -huh. I'm here with like a million views a month making yeah. 50 times less money, they're saying, God, I wish I was doing what you're doing. Yeah. I'm like, exactly. well, it's happiness at the end of the day. You, that's what the most important thing is, you know? We can all chase the bag. We can all chase yeah. like these numbers to make us feel better. But if you or, turn off that camera and you don't feel it, yeah, it's completely like, worthless. It's so <laughs> under underestimated and underappreciated how vital that is mm. you know i couldn't agree more 100 yeah. percent. so moving on swiftly who would you say are your idols and people who influence you on a daily basis oh my idols i actually think my friends i know it's a very cliche answer That's but like really not a cliche answer a cliche answer i don't know would be like i don't know ronaldo or someone bullshit yeah like that. no i think the people that i'm with all the time like well you, you know my housemates yeah. you know like even you bro like all of my friends around yeah. me right now and even even some of my really good friends back yeah, yeah. home who like call me and like see what i'm I appreciate up to that and i see what they're doing I'm honestly like, sorry yeah. to interrupt but i just have to say this because it's very key it's you are only as good as the people you surround yourself with yeah and i got this quote that I actually think is very, very, very interesting is show me your friends and I'll tell you your future. It's a good one. Cause I think it's, I think it's key too. You know, like, I think you can, cause I, I've been in those places where I've been like with one person, not really seeing my friends very much. And then I feel like creatively I'm drained, mentally exactly. I'm drained, physically I'm drained. The human nature is we want to impress people. We want to impress the people around us. That's just who we are. Like yeah. it is, we do things to, to get a laugh out of people or to be like, okay, I want to impress this girl. I want to impress this guy. That's who we are. So if you surround yourself with people who are always building you forward and are like, okay, you know what? I think you should do this with constructive criticism and actually the truth instead of people that are yeah. doing the complete opposite. Yeah. That can drain you. That yeah, can yeah. make you feel like shit. That can make you unmotivated. So if you surround yourself with people that are actually doing better things than you, who actually have goals, who actually are doing good things, doing successful things, mate, you are only going to yeah. get better and grow every day. Yeah, yeah. And I think the good balance here in Bali in particular is you have like, for example, you're younger than me. Yeah. I'm like in the middle and then like, I'll just throw a name out there as like another really good friend of mine, Swent, for example. Yeah. He's a bit older than me. So like you get that balance, you know, yeah. you get like, like me and you talk about like serious stuff. Yeah. We have a lot of fun. Yeah. And we're it's now working together. Exactly. You see it's how complete, all of that comes it's together? It's a complete spectrum. You know? you know what I mean? And when you've got that from people that are a bit younger, a little bit older and also your age Perfect. is the best recipe for like fluidity 100%. in life yep. I think you can possibly get. Yep. So like, I won't even give like another answer. I think it's just literally the people around me. Good answer, mate. Another, another good, good answer. Oh, I'm doing all right, am I? <laughs> it's good. Green takes from Mr. George Benson so far. Plus five. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on to Chelsea oh. because that is as long as uh, we don't really to? want to talk about it right now considering the last two results, but it is our Chelsea. We do love Chelsea. Yeah. So we do have the love for the same club. How did you go supporting Chelsea the first time? Is this something from your parents or is it something at a young age you're like, you know what? I like this club. Yeah, no, it's my old man for sure. Yeah. Like before I was born, he was going home and away, going everywhere, doing things I don't even really want to know about probably. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, there was only ever going to be one club. Yeah, me, you know, like, and there only is one club it's Chelsea yeah. football club it's weird my, my nan liked Wolves That's not bad for no right? reason whatsoever Wolverhampton yeah I mean like why not mate? okay like Man United we actually watched that game likes. together and that wasn't too good either <laughs> I swear every game we watch together we lose by the way mate, it's Liverpool not, it's not we lost a couple of others but no like for me I was obsessed with football from as soon as I could be like yeah. even when I first learned to write, the first thing I wanted to do was like write out my own leagues. Uh -huh. So I'd make like, I got, you know, the bingo machines where yeah. you get the balls and you put That's them out. That's very interesting. So I'd do like an yeah. FA Cup draw, yeah, yeah, for yeah. example, and then I'd write it all out and then I'd either like roll a dice or I'd go on FIFA or something, see all the scores in a list, yeah. then write them out and see who goes through. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then like, next thing you know, you've got like Charlton winning an FA Cup or something. <laughs> yeah, I love it. But I'd, I honestly, I, I wish I could, I'll try and get a picture you can insert uh -huh. from my mum. She all has right. all of it still. All right, sweet. There is like folders this deep. 
Yeah, I can like, let's the use the Kura that. Kura can yeah, as an yeah. example. Like three Kura Kuras deep of uh -huh. pages and pages of it. Yeah. You know? I can then, I can say the same thing though with me with just Chelsea Football Club, like just pictures of me from being like, I don't know, two, three, four in just a Chelsea shirt with my mates yeah. running around, winning when we won the Champions League, just there's just history there, you know? Yeah. And it is an amazing club, I must say. And yeah. we will be going to a game very soon together once I hope so. whole shit is over. I hope so. There's nothing better than walking down the Fulham Road with a cold pint in your hand, singing Chelsea, Chelsea. Chelsea, Chelsea all day. <laughs> oh, man, yeah. yeah, I do miss that, actually. Yeah. But something. I think for me, it was like, it was those pages of football were like my football reality. Like, yeah. I can... If I can't go to football every day, then at least I've got it in my room. It's you know? associated with I, what I'm, you're doing. I'm in my reality Mate, of football I'm the now. Exact you know? same. <laughs> like yeah. at a young age, I was either a banging out career mode on the PlayStation, yeah, exactly. winning, or even now, like I did the Bali Cup, for example. So what I did was yeah, very I did a big, project. big, big, big football tournament, very prestige high end football tournament based in Bali with bunch of teams and from locals to, to expats and it was actually a very successful day we banged out a very good tournament for charity I gathered a lot of money and gave it all to charity because I wanted to give back to the community during COVID very good and it was a very successful project so the Bali Cup stay tuned for that I'm um, actually going to play next no, time yeah you better come next time I don't have a hangover <laughs> <laughs> he's so, actually right I can't even deny I can't the lie. Bali Cup coming very soon in 2021 it's going to be a very very good project a very very good event um, and it's going to showcase a lot of Bali brands but it's going to be an overall amazing day of football. That's what we like. You can actually check it out and follow on Instagram if you want the Bali Cup. So Bali Cup. You get some videos of me banging. Link below. Balls. Hopefully <laughs> below below my link. Yeah. I hope, you know. Prioritize. Uh, know, top or bottom <laughs> for Mr. Benson. Okay. <laughs> Statistic wise at the top, mate. Okay, morning. <laughs> uh, all right. So, cra uh, craziest Chelsea story. Craziest. Away and home. Oh. At the bridge and away. Because you, you have been to, let's say, basically every Chelsea game for the past two two years, is it? Yeah, I was doing home and away for a couple of years. Yeah. I'd say away, I've had some mad ones, actually. Mm. Like, I went to uh, Rome for Roma away in 2017, just yeah. before I flew here, actually. Uh -huh. and um, Champions League, I'm presuming. Yeah, Champions yeah. League. Uh, the worst trip I've ever had in terms of like a 72-hour window. All the things that could have gone wrong did. I'll explain very briefly all of it. First of all, flight, left my passport in the seat in front of me, got oh, off the plane, no. and if you land in Italy, you go down the step onto the runway, and then they wouldn't let me back on, even though I wasn't like... Yeah, you like, can't do that. Yeah, it's, it's like, ridiculous. okay, well, can someone go get me yeah, the passport? Yeah, can you go get the passport? Like, you, you work on this plane, like, you're about to go and clean it, I hope. This whole thing, like, with, yeah. So they, they, did, they basically said, go inside, wait in there, we'll bring it to you in a moment. Long story short, person didn't go back onto the plane. Didn't go look for it. Didn't even clean it's it. It's not because like they it's your it. earphone. It's like, oh, I left my earphone. It's your fucking passport. Yeah, like, it's like, I can't it. get into your country if you don't go just and get, go it. get it. Like, please. Or like, I can if you it. let me. But yeah. You know, yeah. So that happened. Got stuck in 11 hours in like a quarantine room. Oh, mate. Um, in Rome. I got ended up getting very angry because no one was communicating with me. I felt like I was a criminal. I feel like people in airports, I don't know, this is just from my like personal memories and like experience, they're just dickheads. Like they just are. It's robotic. I'm sure, no, yeah, it's, it's robotic. You know, I know you can never be too careful, Yeah. but like but I literally I just told you, I'm a geezer who's left my passport on the seat. And I can't be able to get into and your country. And I can't go get it. Yeah. So like, you don't need to like, cause they, they one of the guys- It's all are, just procedure based robotic behavior yeah and that's how that's they it. operate which I is okay it's but like it's annoying when it's you that's happening to mm -hmm. you know so the guy has a gun in his pocket i start like coming in i'm saying listen please tell me where my passport is if you're not going to tell me send me home yeah i don't want to stay in this room forever <laughs> and i was doing it like this and send italians get a bit funny sometimes <laughs> oh, when you're mate. like being <laughs> so he, he pulled his gun out and put it down oh, on the what? table with his hand on it like pointing towards me and was like go and sit down what Over i'm like a fucking hell man like let me leave your, Who's this I, I'll Tony go back Montana home. you're dealing with over here? Something, bro. Sopranos? This is a big tone. I don't know, man. <laughs> what so were then, you really leaving on the plane, Mr. Benson? Is the question. Was it your passport? It was definitely 100% <laughs> my passport. Absolutely. <laughs> but then long story short, 11 and a half hours after I left it on the plane, I got out of the airport, yeah. went to my hotel room, 120 euros per night in the middle of Rome, no window, no AC. Oh, no. It was like the end of September, October. It was still pretty warm. Dreadful room. Awful. And then uh, went to the game. They lost 3-0. Got left in the Olympic Stadium for two hours afterwards because all the Roma fans and Lazio wanted to go and kill everybody. Uh, that was a bad away trip. Atletico Madrid away was pretty good. Ended up with a tattoo on my wrist as a result uh, of uh, Batshuayi. As for to home games... Um, 
To be, that's not a good facial to, expression. No, to be honest, like... <laughs> Come just, on, we've got good memories at the bridge. Yeah, like, it's, it's always good, you know, but yeah. I, I'd say probably seeing us win the league, yeah. seeing John Terry's farewell when yeah, yeah, we won yeah. the league under Conti, like, that was emotional. I was crying, man. Oh, there were man, grown 100%. men all around me, like, old boys yeah. crying, like, couldn't believe it. Oh, Such Terry's a beautiful a, day, Terry's man. a legend of the club. Like, he is, on. he's the biggest legend, he I'd is. say. And Captain he's also shagged everyone's wife, which is another plus. No comment. <laughs> but... But, you know, I think it, every, every, everything to do with it, like I always say with fo- people that don't get football, people that don't like football, yeah. it's very hard to communicate like how much it means because mm-hmm. they don't even see it a little bit, you know? So I think... Well, if you do want to see how much it means to them, there'll be a link in the description to your videos. So which, GBFC, yeah. GBFC, uh, baby. It's a daily <laughs> thing. I think, again, like I, I can never run out of things to talk about with Chelsea, uh-huh. you know, like bringing it back to content. Like it's always going to be something. As long as you don't and that's liquidate. what you want when you're making yeah, content. Yeah. You don't yeah. want to have that dry, dry drought. Yeah, stagnation is impossible unless yeah. you like keep going out partying all the time and don't make a video, which I've also spent a couple of days doing. But, yeah, man, like incredible memories. And uh, I think it's about time we made some together at football. Oh, yeah. Instead of watching on a laptop screen here or on, in the Forge. We'll do it. Yeah. 100%. It's, 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 it's in the list for sure. It's in the schedule. Football videos coming out as well as the Bali Cup. I don't know if I will have you in my team, but let's see. <laughs> I, I, I won't have you in my team, bro, you know? Um, I want to be playing you, that's for Jorginho, sure. bro. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. Too good. You don't really want to be called Jorginho after his fucking shocker of Maybe a penalty. Maybe not, no. <laughs> he needs to stop taking penalties for our club with that Never bullshit again. stutter. Never again. Shambolic behavior. Anyways, favorite players in the current Chelsea team and of generations? Favorite, player, uh, favorite players ever. There's five. Zola was my first favorite yeah. because he was like the little wizard. I was a kid. I was like, I want to be Zola. Lampard, obviously, Terry, Drogba, and Eden Hazard. Yeah, perfect. I couldn't agree. Like that, that for me is the yeah. five of my lifetime at least. You get Frankie in there? Oh, yeah, he yeah. was number two. Right, no, he's actually number one, but like he was, I did it in order of like yeah. when they appeared for the club. Okay. Almost, Terry appeared before well done, mate. Lampard, but you know. <laughs> I know there'll be someone in the comments who's like, we do this really long podcast, and he's like, you said Lampard played for Chelsea before Terry. I didn't mean it, okay? I know I was wrong. Um, current team. Still have a go at him, though. <laughs> yeah, current team. I love N'Golo Kante. Yeah. Thiago Silva is absolutely new, brilliant. New addition, but you yeah. can just see he's already that pivotal man that we need in the yeah. centre position at the yeah. end, you know? And I have a soft spot for Mason. I think, oh, he, mate, I think he's you brilliant. You have to. He is yeah. a homegrown player that just, you can see his and life is Chelsea football he's just a good lad, bro, you know? Yeah. Like, you can just tell. He is a good he's guy. He's just a you good guy. You can have a fucking glass of water with him. And have glass a of water shot, or a Kura Kura yeah, beer if he wants to come here on holiday. Mason Mount, come to Bali, grab yourself a Kura Kura beer, mate. We'll take care of you. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty... It's hard because when we record this now, they're going through a bit of a yeah. rough one. So I'm well, kind you got of, to. You got to. I'm kind of happy that the games are probably going to get called off for yeah. the next couple of weeks. I think they need it, and I need it as well, really. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. I have my yeah. say Didier Jogba for me, hands down. It has to be. The that man, one the, moment, that is... Mate, that is one of the best ecstasy. moments of my life. Yeah, oh, ecstasy. it's my number one. It's my number one. And it's Jogba! Oh, my God. There you God. go. That header... Insert audio that, clip here. <laughs> that header, Jesus Christ. Yeah. I just remember watching that with a bunch of mates that are actually Arsenal supporters, Man United supporters, Spurs supporters. And I'm like, you're not coming into my house unless you're wearing a Chelsea shirt. And we're watching the game. I, ho- I hope and I fl- they didn't at do the it. End- no, they did. Oh, that's <laughs> I got appalling. a picture of it. That's awful. And at the end of it, you can just see the emotion in their face. They ask you, maybe even change to a Chelsea supporter because of how good that moment was for our club. I don't want to meet these guys. Just so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Okay, a little bit, would you rather question for you, mate. Would you rather? Oh. Would you rather manage Chelsea Football Club or play for Chelsea Football manage. Club? Manage. Manage. I actually, I actually think I'd be a decent football manager. Yeah. Like, I actually, I actually could see that happening as well. I, I actually was thinking for a while, like if if I could go down that route, I would actually not mind being a football manager. As well. I would, one day I'd love to get coaching badges. Yeah. I, I don't I mean, know I, when. What is the process of becoming a manager in a, in, for a football club? Do you actually know? Um, I mean, if we look at it now, like. Most of the managers that are coming up now were ex-players. Yeah. Same with punditry. That's, like, that's it's very hard to get obvious, into those like, two things yeah, because unless you've you're played not, before. Yeah. yeah but so there is some other ones like I'm. Oh, I don't know who, but there are some managers that just popped out of nowhere and actually are yeah, managing yeah. top like, tier clubs. I think if if I'm being honest, I don't know this for a fact. I'm yeah. just throwing this out the top of my head. You look at what they're doing at Red Bull, Red yeah, Bull Leipzig, Leipzig, Red Bull Salzburg, yeah. Red Bull whatever it is, like. I'm sure there's going to be programs that are coming out from these guys. Look at like Nagelsmann, the manager of Leipzig. Tactician, brilliant. Mm-hmm. Like people like this, 
that is how I think football managers of the future could become, you know, through these big billionaire corporations, brands, corporations yeah. Yeah, yeah. who are like, okay, we can create a blueprint yeah. of football, not as it's been known, but as we now see it and know uh -huh. it as a gap. And then like, you can go into it that way. I, I think that's going to happen. Red Bull sure. are an amazing company, man. Like they cover yeah. so much and the quality that they handle things is as a sponsorship is insane. Yeah. Those, te like, those teams, for example, get a lot of stick because they're, they're not called like, proper, there's no history, like clubs, not yeah. proper football clubs. But like, sometimes you just got to wake up and understand and accept that the world that we live in now <laughs> evolution is going to involve this more and more yeah it you is. know like the big corporations are taking over the rich right? get richer look what's and of course they're going to want a slice of another cake you know <laughs> look what's happening with covid exactly okay so would you say okay managing for sure would you say you'd rather be a, f a full-time manager at chelsea football club or a full-time commentator oh. for the biggest games of the world champions oh. league Everything. My biggest dream has been always to commentate on the BBC for a World Cup final with England in it, which is obviously something and I England can't control. It. And uh, that, that <laughs> would be like that would be the pinnacle. But yeah. I definitely say commentator. Okay. You know, like being a football that. manager would be fun, but like I'm never. I don't think maybe maybe in ten years, who knows? It'd be the nature of like me to actually say like, yeah, yeah okay, maybe I want to be a football manager now. But like I think you got to stick to your roots. Sticking to what I know, like commentary. Yeah, mm -hmm. that'd be me. Maybe we'd actually get you commentating for the Bali Cup. <laughs> I, I told you this. I said, like, at that least like, I could good. commentate with a hangover. I can't really play very that, well, but... Well, you didn't even show up, mate. You could show up with a hangover and have it more It was finished by the time I woke up, you know? I was there you go. busy. <laughs> busy. <laughs> Best game of football you've ever experienced. So not based around Chelsea, because you have been to the Euros. You have... Was, have you been to the World Cup as well? I've been to the World Cup. In Brazil? Uh, not in Brazil. Not I was Brazil. in. I was at the semi-final that England lost against Croatia. Yeah, mate. I was in. I was in back in the UK for that, and I was actually. I started watching the process. You're in of Leeds. England. Yeah, I was shout out to Leeds by the way. It's actually a sick city. I was actually starting watching the process of England in the Euros in Bali, and I was like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna fly to the UK on this date. Hopefully, they're still in, and they made it. You know, England. Classic England. Usually don't make it in the World Cup. I'm half German, half English. So when it comes to the World Cup. I usually am a German supporter, but this, <laughs> this time, guy, man. <laughs> this time, this, this guy. time, it was the complete opposite. Korea knocking Germany. I was like, I got England. We're good. <laughs> I'm not actually that bad of a fake fan, but yeah, I was like, all right, sweet. I'm going to be in the UK to watch England. Big screen. You know how it was yeah, in, the, yeah. in the parks, in Leeds. Everything was going well. Trippier bangs in that amazing free kick. It's calm, they hope. It's Literally, calm, they wouldn't hope. stop ringing around the stadium. Chance are going, and it just went left from there. I don't even want to go down that route of what happened. Yeah. It was predictable after a while, and I feel like, as an England fan, like growing up, the first World Cup I remember was 2002. Uh -huh. I remember I was in Mallorca for pretty much the whole I thing. Was one, I, was, I was one years old then. You were. <laughs> 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 no, like, for me... From 2006 onwards, I was like proper in it, you know, yeah. like 2002 was kind of cool. I was, I knew what football was, <laughs> but I wasn't you. like <laughs> in it, you know, but. Was it in the scene, mate? I think the most like, again, it was like one of the worst feelings I've ever had in my life. Huh. Like I was in a neutral seat. I went there with um, uh, the guys from Qatar, actually. Uh -huh. So I was invited there to the game and I was in a neutral seat, surrounded by loads of Russians, Croatians, couple English, but like not many. Not the best people. And I just remember, about. like at the end of extra time, I was sat with my hat, head in my hands. I couldn't sit down, bro. Like I was yeah. honestly the worst person in the stadium because I was in a place where I couldn't stand up and go nuts because that's what I wanted to do. Because yeah, you're neutral. And I was like in the stairway the whole time, pacing up and down the steps as if I was a manager. <laughs> and then I think I pissed people off so much throughout the entirety of the game. The, at the end, when I'm sat there on the steps in Russia with my head in my hands, crying, crying yeah. with a flipping beer in my hand and like dropped it over myself. And oh, then no. so all the guys coming down were like kicking me, slapping oh, me around the you head, see, that's just, throwing beers that's on my just, face. Like that, No offense, but I'm sorry, that's just Russians, yeah. man. Like you wouldn't, like, come on, like why? It, it was, it it was outrageous, even... but like it was, it was probably one of the lowest. So that was your worst footballing moment. Yeah, that's the worst. Yeah, that's for the sure. worst by far. I'm gonna actually pop on another bad boy. Yeah, this one's got a bit warm. This oh. one's a lager. So the yellow one's a pale ale, this one is a lager. Blue, just like my hair. Yeah. Well, it's kind of looking a bit dirty now, mate. It, it is, it needs brown. to be redone. <laughs> it does need to, be, need redone. to be redone. Remember, Kaizai, 10% off all cans. And Kaizai, 20% off. Come, I'm just saying, you're good at this podcasting thing. 
By the way, oh this is like a compliment for a good friend over there. Hey, like, you this see, is enjoyable. YouTuber, thank You're you. doing Second good. Second episode. It's only going to get better. This is a journey, guys. You're only going to get better. The content's going to get better. We got actually two episodes. I'm actually filming another one tomorrow. So they're both going to come out after New Year. I He's finish. on a roll. I'm going to bang out two videos before the New Year shenanigans so I can party in peace. <laughs> 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 All right. Cheers, Say mate. No cheers, bro. Uh, and moving on now, next question into the Wembley Cup because that's something mm. you took part of, mm. which actually is a very, very amazing event. Shout out to Spencer and all the boys who do that because for me, that's something amazing. Like to do, they as well do for charity. It's kind of a bit of an influence on why I actually did the Bali Cup. I was gonna say that yeah. that's very like um, the Bali the Bali Cup format is is very good to kind of model off of the Wembley Cup. It's good. It's cool. So your experience, the players you played with, because you actually played with quite famous players. I Which did. is a blessing, man, in life. So that could be some people's dreams. So go, yeah, in, yeah. go into some details about what the Wembley Cup is, maybe. Not so much what it is, just a quick abbreviation. And yeah. Some of the famous players you played with. Yeah, no. So I could never thank Spencer enough for creating that concept yeah. and coming up with the an Wembley OG, Cup. An absolute OG. Like Spen Spencer's one of the nicest guys I've met yeah. on YouTube, actually, for sure. Like he's very genuine, to down to earth, <laughs> loves football, bro. Like, loves it. It's his life as well. Like and you. it was when I got invited onto it. Like obviously, there's a lot of logistics involved. Like they obviously paid us as well, yeah. so like it went through my management. That was all negotiated, blah blah blah. But like for me, I'd have done it for nothing. Yeah. I'd have been like, "You're telling me I get to play at Wembley? First time was in front of no fans. I did two. Yeah. First time in front of no fans. Second time in front of like twenty five, twenty eight thousand or something crazy. Wow. And I'm that, like, I'm that not... in itself is a dream come true, man. Yeah. And the thing, the thing with it was, and I've never actually really spoken about this. The thing with YouTube and football YouTube in particular is everybody is very much like focused on what they want to be seen as doing i think uh -huh. so like for example there was one episode where i actually won a challenge by quite a bit and it was to, for the central midfield position and uh i didn't end up playing actually in playing in that position but i didn't care I, I, I bring it up now you because can name at the speak time, if you are, who was it? Who, who 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 played the power card in that no, situation? No, no. It, it wasn't a power, <laughs> it wasn't a power card. It was more of like I wanted to play yeah. in central midfield, yeah. but I'm nowhere near as good as Chris MD is at football. Okay. So they knew that so it would have been better if Arsenal Chris fan. was in the middle <laughs> and I was at the back. Typical Arsenal. That, that, that's just the way it is, you know. Like I. I would just was just happy to start. Yeah. No, mate, know? yeah, I would have fucking. Been and no on the one wants line. to be in defence, bro, because everyone wants to score at Wembley. Yeah, you see what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. it's very I like much. Unlike chunks who actually missed yeah. the penalty. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I also gave away a penalty. Oh no. Um, <laughs> I, which I still don't think was. You know, I think uh, Chew Boy ran into me, uh -huh. and um, that Chew was Boy's that. Chew Boy's an EA representative, no? Uh, I don't know if he still is now, he but was, he definitely though, was. Day, yeah, yeah. Yeah. but in terms of the experience, I think. VAR that we had some video assistant ref that one. I think for me, like the shoots were fun, but on the like the days before the match, we all stay in a hotel. Yeah, yeah. So it's actually that nice. Yeah, 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 you know? yeah. Kind of brings you back to like kid days when you went on camp, you know, with your mates. Yeah, or something. yeah, yeah. But it's like it was it was just like going to a football game, uh -huh. you know, like the day of the football match that you go and watch is pre-game, go for a beer, some nice food, and then you go to the match and then you do the same thing afterwards. It was yeah. exactly the same with the Wembley Cup. We'd all be hanging out beforehand. Yeah, there was like filming stuff we had to do, but it was like, no one cared because we were about to play a game at Wembley. Yeah. Play the game and then everyone goes to the Hippodrome afterwards and gets sick. absolutely annihilated and loses a load of money. That was exactly <laughs> what it was, literally. Perfect, perfect. It was sick. And who I were think... the top two names you played with? Um, God, I can't actually remember who I played with now. Okay, JJ well, Who you played against, let's say. Just who was in the same on the same pitch as you? I'm sh I played with Akotcha and, and it was amazing. sick because I actually worked with him with Nike in Paris about oh, really? a few months before. And uh, we followed each other, talked a bit on Twitter nice, after nice. that. And then he remembered and it was like oh, fist see, bump I, when we saw I'm each other again. Like, That's my like, teammate, JJ Akotcha. <laughs> so good they named him twice, madness. bro. Yeah. It was He's like, an incredible player, man. That was cool. Very, very good player. And then I remember after the game, uh, we were all like collecting our medals. I think we lost, actually. What was and the score? I can't remember, like 7-2 or something stupid. <sighs> And Jeez. then um, I just saw Robert Perez just stood there. Yeah. Like no one's talking to him. I'm like, hang on a minute. How many happening. times can I be like having a little nosy around Wembley? No, uh, Perez is chatting there. Chatting to Perez, you know, like yeah. <laughs> he's okay. an Arsenal player. Man. He's we'll an Arsenal we'll scumbag, but what we'll else? What else? You know. <laughs> yeah, that's he's actually, also French. <laughs> yeah, I'd say that's still to this day probably the one of the top experiences I've ever had through YouTube, other than playing a game at Stamford Bridge, but still. Wow, that's equally as good, man. And well I admit, bro, I, f I, know, well I don't think done, anyone saw pal. this. I had a shot from 25 yards, last kick of the game, outside the box, put my laces through it, but it hit the corner flag, bro. Oh. For real. 
so bad, man. I was so angry. <laughs> so angry, bro. I didn't even care about anything after that. That's anyway. his temperament. <laughs> it's an interesting Calm moment. is out in football. Mm. Being there, seeing that. Always sport. Moving on to your thoughts on the VAR. Thoughts on VAR? I think it's absolutely atrocious. Yeah, I couldn't like, agree I, with I, you more, I, mate. For me... Like, I'm not qualified, apparently. Oh, fuck off. I'm more qualified Anyone who than watches the game idiots. of football and plays football from a young age is qualified to have an opinion on the VAR. I'm more qualified because I watch enough football to know that these decisions they're making on an almost game-by-game -game basis are wrong. Are wrong. Completely like, wrong. Like, the laws of the game are written for a reason. And what is the point in introducing it, this thing that kills the game. so much of the exactly. love and passion? Exactly. And like, okay, I'll give you an example. Chelsea Ajax last yeah. season. 4-4 it finished. Yeah. We would have won 5-4 Four. from 4-1 down. 100%. Amazing game. Can you imagine? Oh. Like, what is that? It's just... The momentum that football builds, builds how good the game is. So all that momentum that's built from each side is just completely cancelled out when it's VAR. You can't celebrate a goal. You can't. Like, and when it, you... I feel like they use it in the most stupid scenarios. Like, when like they're supposed to... Yeah. Or when a they're hair supposed the to armpit. use the VAR, oh, come they on. don't even check it. No. But when it's like, oh, let that slide. It's a fingernail. It's a hairline. Yeah. It's my guy's fucking left toe. Nah, VAR. And it's yeah. there by 0 0.01 centimeters. That's not a goal. Oh, that yeah. is a goal. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, there's two ways of looking at it. If, if it's like completely nailed down and these are the laws of the game and yeah. we will use it every, every time to make time sure everything is consistent with no the laws, problem with it. No, problem. no problem. If that's how it's going to be, okay. okay Otherwise, there's no point yeah. in a rule book. But it's not using it. They're not but doing that. The people operating it are stupid. Yeah, 100%. Apps, the, ref, the quality of refereeing in English football <laughs> is fucking atrocious. Yeah. I can say that here yeah. because <laughs> it's not my YouTube channel. But like, it is appalling, bro. Yeah, it is. It's and it's bad. like, look at the last World Cup. Was it like... Clattenburg was going to be refereeing. Why is there no other refs? Oh, none of oh, the other ones the are good enough. They're not good enough. Of course they're not good enough. Mate. You know, like, what is this? How about this? We go work the VARs. No. Because <laughs> I don't want it actually there in the first place. I don't want to be like Mate, facilitating yeah, honestly, it. hashtag VAR out. That's another hashtag yeah, for you I'm guys done with in it. the comment, man. Done with it, man. I'm done. It's just stupid. It ruins the momentum, man. All that momentum yeah. built up and gathered up, which football is, you know, that anticipation. The flow of the game is just completely gone because mm. of this stupid technology. Ridiculous. All right, swiftly moving on again. Who's going to win the league this year? Liverpool. Liverpool? Yeah. But again, a month ago, I would have said we'd have won it. But Same. I would not even a month a feeling, ago. But no, that no, game no. at Wolves it was a pivotal moment on why we're not going to win the league. Yes, when I almost broke my hand by hitting the bar so hard because I was so angry. I was fuming. <laughs> Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. The thing is, like people, you I can say this now. We watched that like, game together, and it, it did yeah. not turn out very well. Uh, for people that are coming from me, if you're watching this because I sent you there from either Instagram or YouTube or Twitter or something, when sometimes when I don't make a video straight after the game, it's for your own good, guys. I can I, I can vouch for him. It's for I your own good. I am raging so <laughs> hard, and I don't want to. This is actually an interesting topic of discussion, yeah. to be honest. I don't want to post a video of me swearing and going crazy. You don't want to portray yourself. In then that that's manner. what people expect from exactly. me. Exactly. I then I want to have Chelsea fans who love our club watching my videos because that's what I feel We're not most of the TV. time. <laughs> this I have nothing against that platform. I have nothing against no, what AFTV do. Saying, but for me, I don't want that yeah. as my content. You know. So sometimes I might wait a little bit. You know, just because like. And this all comes back together for everything we've been talking about in this podcast today. Yeah. The way that your work is and the, the mood that is expected from you, from your viewers and what people want will determine how you live your life in any given moment with relationships, with your friends, with yeah. your social life, with how you feel within yourself when you're alone. Yeah. All of this comes back together. So I don't want to be there straight after a Wolves defeat in the 95th minute. Yeah effing and blinding, that saying energy. this is shit, that yeah. shit. Because then when I wake up in the morning, I read the comments, yeah. there's a thousand comments, you're and everyone's right. like, yeah, you're yeah, right, yeah, yeah, fuck, yeah, this. yeah fuck this. And, and then my hate. mood for the day is fuck this. You exactly, know? It's, it's what you put out into the universe, it's manifestation. In, yeah, bro, in it's a so way. simple, it's so simple. And people sometimes like, it's one of the hardest things about what I'm doing right now actually, yeah. is people's expectation of me is that if the video's not out in the like two minutes after full time, there's something wrong. Like people don't know what goes into it, you know? Yeah. And for me, I'm not just the mechanical creator, you know? I'm actually a very emotive person. Yeah. I'm very it's much like, mate. I care about myself and how I feel every day more yeah. than I care about making this one video. And why do people think And if people you? don't like that, that's okay. Yeah. But I'm not gonna change it because if I change it, I stop this like, 
good pattern I've had yeah. for nine years. Momentum. I don't get burnouts. It's momentum. I don't get, I because I'm in control of everything yeah. and I take charge, uh-huh. you know? And that's just it for me, bro. Well you said, know? bro. Well said, well said, well said, well said. And who's gonna that win? That was a rampage, man. We started off who's gonna win the league and we went down that. I love it. I love it. And who's gonna win the Champions League? Chelsea, we have to say. We've got a chance. Fuck it. I'm we could say. beat Atletico. Right now, we're going to get battered by them. Oh, mate, right, we, the way we're playing right now, they are the team that will demolish us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. we got to fix that. Bayern Munich Just like me, again, me no playing doubt. you in tennis. <laughs> <laughs> a funny one. Yeah, he's actually on a very good roll with me at the moment. Bayern Munich are winning it again. They are a class above anybody else. Yeah, yeah. They, they, their level of football, or just the level of football they showed last season in the Champions League, is a piss take. Yeah, it was like playing semi-pro. On Bro, you know what it is like. It was it's ridiculous. The fact that all of their players spent all day, every day in the Training. gym. Yeah. Oh yeah, like they lifting weights. Bro. You would see that. I don't know who our player was, but I saw a before and after pick. Goretzka. Goretzka, that's exactly massive, bro. Is. Mate, he was unit. He looked like me. He was a slim lad, you know, and then you just saw him like six months after being in Bayern Munich. Crazy. Even Coutinho, exactly. like yeah. slender, and then all of a sudden he's like Boom. big Phil, running bro. nonstop. Big Actually Phil Mitchell, it, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right any any future content we can look forward to that's going to be based on football in indonesia oh yeah big big stuff you know i actually had something that i almost i tried to execute for the world cup that would have been like probably the most ambitious youtube football project ever Uh it didn't go through for one story or another won't go into it now but um in indonesia i think the league is opening back up again in february it is it is supposedly that is correct I wanted to start this before, but I'm talking to somebody now who's going to be director and producer. I want to be creating a series of football content within the Indonesian Premier League. Yep. But it's going to be far more tribal football focus as opposed to just like going to the games and recording the yeah, vlogs. Yeah, it's going to be the fans behind the clubs. Yeah. How they support it, where they live, more in like culture yeah, based yeah, football. Yeah, exactly that. Yeah. I don't think we've even talked about this very no, much. Not but really. That's exactly what yeah, it we're is. On the same, like, same I want it to be. Like, I live here, so I feel as though I'm obliged to engage in the Indonesian culture. Not just in Bali, but over the whole country. Around Indonesia, yep. You know? Because football is a very big thing here, man. Like, I can't right now. Like, let's say... Fans die over derbies here. I know. And that's what I want to go and hopefully not document directly. (laughs) But I want to talk to people who it means so much to, who I get it because I'm a diehard Chelsea fan. But you I want don't to relate get to. It. Yeah, I want to yeah. create that relation and I want to document that. I think I'll be really sick. Senses and emotions. I'll do very well. So it's going to be like, it's going to be a very in depth series. Like, Perfect. it's not going to be just like your regular run of the mill YouTube content. Mm-hmm. It's going to be. Almost what Copa 90 does, but better. Or no? I, would, I wouldn't want to go and say it's going to be better because I haven't done it yet. Yeah. But like, you I want put it that, to be. You got to put that out there, bro. Always achieve, yeah. always aim to achieve better. Yeah, yeah, but I don't, I don't want it to doing. be like so good because it's better than something else. I want it to be so good because I made it and I'm proud of it, you know? So I'm not, yeah, but I think you just hopefully- You're just being humble, guys. Hopefully we can start in February. If the, I mean, they've gone and closed it's, Bali now for two weeks. Yeah, so you know what the you Indonesian You can't really plan things like, anymore. It's They say one thing, especially here. They say one thing and they do the complete opposite a week later. Yeah. So yeah. We'll, but that, we'll, that's definitely we'll, gonna come. And we'll then play Euros with the cards we're dealt Europe. with. Oh, mate. I think summer. we can do something special there. For sure. That's going to be something very, very sure. intriguing. Stay tuned for that, guys. That's going to be something very, very, very good. For real. Derek, for real. <laughs> Where, that's just an inside joke. Right <laughs> Why the fuck is this guy saying this? <laughs> so salamander over here. Little, little turquoise salamander, dude. <laughs> All right, so when creating content, there are three main reactions that I believe you want from your viewers. Okay. There's a yes, there's a no, and there's a wow. So when you create a piece of content and you upload it, you're either looking for, okay, yes, I'll set this piece of content, I'll watch it. Or it's like, nah, that's not, that video is not for me. Yeah. And there's that, wow, this video is, I like this, I'm gonna share this, I'm gonna tell my friends about it. Yeah, okay. And when you create content, would you say that is what you're driven by? I want to aim for that wow factor from no. what the viewers want? Or you I used to. I, th- yeah. I used to think it was like, I wanted to blow people's minds. Uh-huh. Now it's just a method of expression that I'm so fucking grateful that it's become my job okay like i could talk about chelsea with that white brick wall behind you or this one behind me no problem for 12 hours a day if i wanted to easily but like now it's like okay there's i don't i'm sat on the end of my bed with a neon light that i drilled to my wall that says gbfc in my slogan yes guys yeah 
and I can just sit there and talk to that camera lens as if it's my mate in the pub. Perfect. And like for me now, it's that's not what about you want, the wow. Then. Like that's what, okay, this is the difference. I still have that creative side in me that's like, I want to make something sick. I have that. But in terms of a job, just sitting, talking about Chelsea every day, I'm okay with just doing it. Yeah. It doesn't need to be crazy. It doesn't need to be wacky. Because I've done that, bro. I've done like sick edits. I've done travel videos that have taken me days to edit. You know, mm-hmm. like I've done that. And I think there's a time and a place for that level of creativity. 100%. You know, and it has to be something that is progressive. With what you're you know? doing, it's not It's not necessary. Yeah. And it's but like... What I do believe in is the environment you are in. If you add little things like you said, your yes guy sign and your SW6 stand for bridge sign. Things yeah. like that, for me, is key. Yeah, because people want to feel like... It's what something I to want associate to, achieve, to. It's eye candy. Yeah, yeah. What I want to achieve is like any... Let's say 50,000 people view my video. Yeah. What the way I see it is whenever I look in the lens of the camera, like straight into the lens, I'm talking to that one. I'm not talking to the collective, I'm talking to the individual. Yeah. So I want people to come to my video and feel like what they're hearing from me is exactly what they'd have heard. If they met you having the one of these at the pub. Yeah. You know, that's exactly. it. And right, to be fine, that's what that. I feel like when I'm watching your videos, mate. It's, good. it's exactly that. It's mm-hmm. exactly like it's me and you mm-hmm. in a room and you're telling me your yeah, point yeah. of view. Of yeah. what the club is and what the club's doing and how they should do yeah, this. Yeah. And, you know what I mean? So well yeah. done. That's and how I feel you're about doing it. that very successfully. Thank you, mate. Uh, who has been the most inspiring and famous person you have worked with? Most inspiring and famous person. Do you say inspiring and famous? Well, they don't have to be famous. Well, I'm just saying, like, is there that top notch person that is in the industry or that is in the sporting scene? Because you have worked with quite some good, well, not good, like high end people um, for brand endorsements, for videos. I think when I went and met Ronaldo. Yeah, you see, there you go. Like, like, <laughs> like <laughs> you see what I mean? It's like, we, famous <laughs> Ronaldo. Yeah, we, we, did some, we did some crazy stuff, man. Like, we went to his house when he was in Lisbon, playing for sport in Lisbon as a kid. Like, we wow. went to his old bedroom. Like, That's saw crazy. the owners. Like, we're chatting to his best friend from childhood Where's just about him. Uh, the video's out on my main channel, but the vlogs aren't there anymore oh, no. because I did daily videos there too for my yeah. vlog channel which is now offline I have yeah. the videos in a hard drive back at home and nowhere else has at it at least they're saved they're, yeah they're, they're safe somewhere <laughs> footage with Ronaldo like yeah dude come like, on man that was <laughs> pretty mad yeah. and then like some of the some of the sporting brand deals I've done with like Adidas Nike like going to some of the biggest games in the world like Champions League finals in a box that wow. kind of thing Madrid derby you got <laughs> Red Wall of Atletico on the left, no, the Real Madrid white Whites, Los Blancos on the right. Yeah. Like being there and like having a flipping like huge buffet banquet and then like all these drinks. Uh, you and can then, like, now. I'm <laughs> like, okay, like, this is It's madness, just Mr. Bro. Benson here. <laughs> yeah, but like. I do think that would have all taken place with your blue hair. <laughs> oh no, back back in those days, I was boring, man. I had fucking dreadful lids. No, no, no. I mean, no, this no, is hardly you. not dreadful. <laughs> That's a tortoise here. So <laughs> <right>. <laughs> Uh, uh, what inspires you in life mate what inspires me in life cliche but it's something nice to talk about no I think I think the thing about good cliche questions is it all depends on the answer if it's a cliche answer perspective it's it's boring (laughs) you know I think it's for me um, I mean this is a whole nother rabbit hole for a whole nother hour really but for just, me, just, just, I wanna I wanna get a concept of what reality really is, uh-huh. and I wanna be able to mold it into whatever it is that I want. Perfect. Like it's it's like wizard. Yeah, there's a lot of depth that I could go into. No, hundred percent. Like, we could talk about this now. for two hours. Yeah, like that's a whole nother thing, yeah. bro. But like, for me, I understand the control that I have over my environment. Yeah. And I also know that there's a lot of things outside of my direct environment that I can also control but being able to manage that without like ruining anyone else's life or ruining anything around me is key and I think you have to get to a certain level of understanding and awareness and groundedness to be able to be there but like I'd say this year for example I've managed to get to a point where I feel like I've elevated myself to a level where I can do these things I can agree with you man yeah something I'm gonna add to that is a very good quote from one of my role models Bruce Lee is the key to immortality is first living a life worth living. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think mean, that, that, that kind of sums it up basically. What big Bruce knows. Yeah. He's a legend, man. That guy is... 
Big Bruce Lee, bro. <laughs> big Bruce Lee. <laughs> big Bruce. Whenever I think of Big Bruce, I think of the <laughs> shark from uh, Nemo. You know? well, yeah, big yeah. Bruce. Snuggly the boss, muggly. bro. The boss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate. Uh, a lot boss. of inside joke. <laughs> Too many inside jokes. Sorry, guys. <laughs> We've only got an hour. We can't explain them all. <laughs> um, what is your top strategy when implementing those things you just basically summed up? whether it's content creating, whether it's living life, whether it's making those decisions with the shift you've done, what yeah. is your strategy behind it? Is it something more towards intuition or is it something more towards you sit down, you do your research, you look at other people who are doing it and you take notes back from it? I do very little research, bro. So I don't you would plan, say it's intuition? I don't make plans, I do plans. Okay. Like I wake up one day and I will decide tomorrow to go back to London yeah. and I'll go without yeah. even telling anybody. I love that. And I'll be like, sorry guys. That's like, intuition. That's just it, you know? Like, that's, that's intuition. That's how I've always tried to operate. And I think sometimes you need to, you need to, we often talk about this off camera, like the run of wins that you get yeah. keeps building winning the next streak, one. Baby. Winning streak, baby. I'm on a winning, winning streak. streak. Like I think when you are so sure that whatever decision you make is going to take you to where you need to be at, you will make it without even thinking. And that process of thinking and procrastination. The universe will slightly nudge you down that way instead of going that way, which yeah. will lead you to go there. That process <laughs> that sound, of, I don't know if yeah. that sounds a bit, but yeah. No, it, it makes sense. Like the process of procrastination and dwelling on something or a decision that deep down you feel like you need to do, but yeah. maybe you're worried about how it's this person's going to affect, yeah, be affected or that person. Literally, the more the less you care about what people around you think, the more, the more you actually care. Does, does this crazy. make sense? It's because a, it's an imaginary boundary yeah, that doesn't yeah, exist, and that's called fear. <laughs> do, human beings don't actually really want to have surface layer relationships. Yeah, they want to have friendships, relationships, and trust in people Family. who are so yeah. attuned to themselves and what they want that when you make a decision that on the surface actually might hinder or hurt someone else. No, you're yeah. doing it because you know it's right for you, which because you're so aware of that, if it's not right for you, you yeah. but you act different. You're not, it's not right for them either yeah. because you can't be yourself. No. So if you're not being real, then what, what's what the meaning doing? in that, <laughs> yeah, that yeah, transaction? Yeah, yeah. It doesn't make any sense. And that's, that's a, you know what I think adds to that and why it, the problem is that's happening a lot is yeah. technology. Yeah, I think technology, reality's te view technology for most people is one is of the reasons bro. because of that. Yeah. There's like, a big distortion in what's real what, and what's we're, not. We're going through a pivotal moment in life right now, mate. And hmm. it's all based around technology. This whole agenda, technocratic agenda shift with this COVID, blah, 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 is something that is going to alter our lives forever. We are not going to live the same life we did two years ago, a year ago. It's not going to be the same. Yeah. I'll tell you that right now. I think for me, like, I don't want to go into I don't like, either want to go down to that. Topic, but I think no. this, an important thing to remember, let me just put my beer next to my agent, Derek. <laughs> I think an important thing to remember is, like, let's just use an example from this whole COVID situation to explain, like, this point. When people say about the amount of deaths that have happened, and then in the small print on there it says, deaths that have occurred of anybody who tested positive of COVID-19 in the last 28 days. What does that mean? I don't know. I don't that, honestly want to go down that, that because of, it doesn't. But bro, I'm pretty sure if we go down this COVID tangent, something's gonna happen. But the thing is, I'll solve it in one thing, one, a couple of sentences. What that does is it shows you that even the people who are supposed to be at the top, yeah. they don't know the official answers. They don't know anything. So the fact that we are all directed Depending to following yeah. that is crazy. It's retarded. And I think for me, like in terms of advice. To anyone watching this, because I guess it's gonna be people that come from you and people that come from yeah. me. Like, I wish people who follow me don't just follow, bro. No, stop don't. Following, following people. Like, you're not a sheep. You are. You're you not. Are not you're a, a human sheep. being. You're you have the being. right to question yeah, everything. Exactly. You have the right to want to know the facts. You and the are truth. the reason of this being. You are. Yeah. The reason of, you do what you want to do in life, and trust me, the reason and the, I'm not the reason. The, when you start doing that, you're gonna realize it's not a process that comes like this. But if you start just, I don't know, like I said in the last thing, just start writing down your things, what you want to achieve instead of following someone that's doing it. Because you're going to find out yourself in the lessons you learn that it will come to you what you want to do. Yeah. Instead of saying, okay, this guy's doing this. I'm just going to follow him down the road. I'm going to do what he's doing. It doesn't work like that. Yeah. No, but you said it very well spoken. Thank you, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's had one too many quarters. Oh, <laughs> I'm one and three quarters through. 
uh, going down that route. He's actually very good at impersonation. So I want you to give us a couple, mate. Oh yes. How many people you want me to speak like today? You little sexy uh, boy. I must say, when we're on it with the boys, his impersonations is a fucking amazing oh. attribute to have. Peter Griffin. Oh, I haven't done this for a long time, mate, bro. Okay, let me let me let me sit up straight. Here we go. <clears throat> hey, hey, it's Peter Griffin. Oh my god, I've not done this for so long. <laughs> That wasn't bad, actually. If that bro. doesn't deserve a like or anything, I'm gonna. If that doesn't like, deserve a Kai's eye subscribe, for Griffin, mate. And who else you got down down in your back pocket? Hey, yeah. Mr. Benson. The pressure's on now. I'm gonna need to smoke my vape now. <laughs> um, we don't condone vapes on this podcast. Oh. I, I don't know, man. Doesn't matter. That was good enough. I can do accents, bro. Oh yeah. Bro. I can do an accent like this for the rest of the podcast if you we wish. Oh yeah. Your ice, mate, he's fucking Hey, up. mate, yeah, don't worry about it, mate. It's no problem. You know, Liverpool today, 1-1 one, one against West Bromwich Albion. It's not good enough. Right, it's not South good enough. African. It's your heart, bro. Your that heart, one's bro. one of the best. It's a great white. I like people from there, bro. They've got nice coffee, bro. Good sharks, bro. Good penguins. <laughs> yeah. It's very nice, eh? Yeah, bro. Real nice, bro. Give us an Aussie. Mate, all you got to do, mate, if you want to get an Aussie accent, is go out in the street, mate. All of those guys well, stuck here from COVID. <laughs> Drink what a the bloody tank? hell's COVID? Uh, great, great, great. Love it. <laughs> if you could make one change to better the world, what would it be? Uh, oh, I can't say what I was going to say now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, one change to better the world. It would definitely have to be to stop watching the news. 100%. Good one. Stop watching. I've said one hundred percent about five times in this podcast, but I don't know what else to say because it is one hundred percent. Well done. Just <laughs> stop watching the news. Yeah. If you wanna, it, like, I set a challenge to people. Right. Yeah. All I do to, for the news is I go on Twitter and go to the Explore page for ten minutes a yeah. day. That is the real news. The prob the problem is like with Twitter, there's a lot of shit. Yeah. But like, if you're aware that there's a lot of and shit, if you follow the right people, you as can well. see. Yeah, you yeah. can see the right stuff. And then you don't need to watch anymore. You don't need to hear the guy's no. voice. So you don't need to see like the news the is all fake. I'm sorry if I broke your heart. I'm sorry if it's not legit, but, but that's just the truth behind it. I'm sorry. I'd say stop and watching. And if you news. haven't seen that with what's happening in the world right now with the politics and with the fucking debates and all the shit that's happening in the US, you, you need to wake up. <laughs> <Bring> <laughs> up. Uh, if you could have a billboard anywhere in the world with anything on it, where would it be and what would it be on it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I actually have one in Batu Balig that says, my name's Derek, with a big picture of me on it. Oh, and I'd be mate, pointing towards your house, bro. Something, <laughs> something, something serious, something okay, good, mate. That, something serious. Where would I put my billboard? Um, strategic. Come on. Strategically. So we're talking like probably like business kind of promotion. You, eh? really. I would say... I'd have my billboards in Times Square because the CPM in America is better than it is in the UK. Yeah. So the potential of 100%. the US audience yeah. who love Christian Pulisic so I, yeah. coming to Shout the George out to Benson Captain Football America. Channel, it would be he better. He needs to get more playing time instead of Werner on the wing. Yeah, it, it's true. But I would put it in Times Square. That's not a bad shout, mate. And I actually, I think I actually I'd just say yes, look. guys. Yeah, yes, guys with the YouTube With link. GBFC on it, that's it. That's it, boom. Maybe what yeah. happens, give us five years, Times Square. We'll yeah, any sponsors you want to contact me, the <laughs> thing is in the description, you can message me yeah. and I'll give you a WhatsApp. But I take a fee because of 5%. the podcast. 5%. <laughs> Make it seven. <laughs> five. <laughs> um, what has been the most important thing you have learned so far in your 26 years on this planet? Oh, the most important thing I've learned in my 26 years on this planet is to not give a fuck about what anyone else wants from me and to literally do whatever the hell I want to do. Amen to that, brother. Like, there's people in life who are going to mean a lot to you that you should always try and do your best for, but you should never do something just for them. It should always be for you, because then when you are the best version of yourself, you can you offer the for best others. when people need you, really. Amen. You know, people want something from you every day. Yeah. No matter where you go, you walk down the street, you go to the supermarket, yep. someone's always going to want something from you, yep. right? But on like a bigger scale of like the people you care about, people always have expectations. Yeah. I don't have any expectations of anyone. Yeah. I expect nothing. Nothing. Therefore, so therefore you don't have a, I never get yeah. let down. I never get resentment exactly. for things. I, sometimes I do. Someone's like super flipping rude or doesn't treat me with respect. But like, I don't expect 
anything. Anything. That's a very, very good thing to live yeah. by. Don't expect anything for anyone, even your own mom, even your own best friend. Yeah, yeah. Like it will help you out. Trust yeah. me. I'm, and what you said about that is, is I wanted to become the best person, of, the best person of myself, that therefore I can provide for others. Yeah. You know what I mean by that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is being a true entrepreneur. That is being the true best of yourself. Is you get to a position in life where you can make other people live their best life. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that can work for business, you know. If you want to if you want to be a billionaire, yeah. you just keep working then, bro. Like yeah. go 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 move that's away, that's, never speak that's to anybody. That's what it comes down to. That's a fundamental. Everyone's like tips and tricks, yeah. learn how to become rich, learn how to become I hate it's it, a graph, bro, so man. much, man. Honestly, if you want the key fundamentals, it is the work ethic. It's the work ethic on Okay, people whatever. are blessed with knowledge that have more knowledge than you. People are blessed that are smarter than you. Of course, that's how it is, but at the fundamental root of it and the core of it is this guy is willing to outwork you. When you're out on New Year's with your mates getting shit faced, he's in his Which basement. Which we'll definitely be doing. He's in his basement coding a website to sell this. That's how it is. And he doesn't mm. do that just one weekend, just one ev event. He'll be doing that 365 days a year, 24 seven, until he gets there. And when he even does get there, he won't even stop. He'll keep going. That's what I think. Yeah, yeah, I think. It's focus on your lane. It's consistency, man. Yeah, focus on your lane and invite people in when they when they deserve to be there or when you when you feel like you can bring something to somebody that's organic yeah. and real. No, then you help. People. Nothing comes from doing nothing. That's right. Yeah, and don't overthink it. That's right. Shout out to my guy Ralph, who said to me actually that quote. I know he's watching. Big ups, my guy. Big up, Ralph. <laughs> Find out, Ralph. Uh huh. No, he's an OG. He's a mentor in my life. I shout out to him. Living out of Ibiza, what a legend. Um, so how, how important is it to actually have role models? How important are role models? Uh, I think it's always really good to have people that you look up to. But I think there's a misconception with role models that is that it has to be someone who's been there and done it. Yep. And I think so much of the focus with people now is that we all want to have all the answers, but now, we're not willing boom, to boom, accept boom. that. The human race we... is getting lazier by the day. Yeah, Everyone yeah, wants yeah. it now. And again, that's due to technology. Yeah, yeah. And I've been through phases in my life where I felt like I've been, well, I mean, I know I have been. I've been a role model to some younger people than me for sure in the yeah. last nine years. But the one thing I did wrong, I'd say maybe three years ago, was I acted in the way I communicated as if I already knew everything. So when I'm talking, I'm talking as if like, it's my way or the highway. Yeah. And if you don't listen, then don't ask me for advice yeah. again because you didn't listen. It's not a good attitude. Yeah, yeah. Whereas now I think it's like, you have to... I know this amount. If you want help coming to me, I'll give you what I can. Yeah, yeah. This is how I see it. I've yeah. not got all the answers yet. I'm still on my but this path. This is what I can provide. But like, this is how I feel about it. And I feel like there's so much, there's so much like education that is dictative that it becomes very difficult to forge your own path because you're trying so hard to be like your role model, you know? Because yeah. you think they know everything and they've got all the answers, but it's but never the truth. But also at the end of the day, just a human being. Yeah, it's never, yeah. it's never the honest it's, truth, it's, it's good to have people that you look up to to see what they're doing right. Yeah. But everyone has good and everyone has bad, no matter how bad they are, no matter how good they are. And yeah. it's important to take the good from them and the bad from them and keep that balance in you. Yeah, and I think like, there's probably some people watching this that are younger. I think that's the biggest problem with the education system. The education system is shambolic. The, the, it hasn't been changed for what, 40, 50 years? Yeah, the gap ridiculous. between the teacher and the student is that the student is learning, the teacher knows. Yeah, so exactly. So when you question it as teaching. a student. The teacher's telling you. Yeah, 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 yeah. When you're the student and you're questioning, there's not enough bridge no. to like help the, the, the student to know that it's okay that they don't understand. Mm. So therefore, this teacher who's supposed to know everything is supposed to bridge that and make the student aware, you know? Why do you think so many successful people dropped out of school or didn't finish school? But you know that's I mean? the reason I dropped out of yeah. school. Because I'm like, why on earth would I pay this person 10 grand yeah. More even to teach some me cases. something that I actually, A, a lot of it I didn't need to. I'm not saying I knew more than the, the no, lecturer. It's the thing they're giving you is not knowledgeable and it's not important yeah. than what, what you need. Where I life. needed to be, I knew I was better doing it alone exactly. without paying 10K. Me driving know? down the street, it's not like, okay, in 150 meters, turn left. Yeah, that's what it says on the sign. It's mm. not like in 150 meters, X minus two minus four, <laughs> turn left. Like, I don't need to you know. know what I, mean? like, I don't need to know this shit. And you've you got know? this. Yeah, exactly. Like that is cancel. 
mate, if I, that's why, I, like, if, if for me, history is very important to know. But, like, if you want to know anything, mate, it's a fucking second away on your fingertips. We're blessed, man. We're blessed. If you could have dinner with any three people, dead or alive, who would it be? Oh, wow. That's an incredible one. I, I actually already know my three answers just straight off the top of my head. David Attenborough would be number one. Oh, well done. I, I, I would pay 100%. for everything, actually. David Attenborough, you are the real God. You are the real religion. You are, everyone needs to focus on what he's doing and make a fucking change. Yeah. Because he is the only person at that level. And look how old he is and he's still doing bits. Yeah. We need to do what he's doing and take the accountability of how important yeah. our planet is. And yeah. I'm not going to go into further details, but we've got very special guests coming soon with environmental specialists and the change they're doing for Ooh, our island, for the is. world, actually. That's good. I think it'd be him. It would be Jose Mourinho. Yeah. Just because I'm just fascinated the by special him. special one. You know, like, <laughs> he, he just is like, he's yeah. incredible. I, I, I don't like him the way I used to because uh -huh. of things but as soon as he's not managing Tottenham I'll love him to bits yeah. again um, him and the third one would probably be ah uh, who would the third one be I think it'd probably be <laughs> I was gonna say so <laughs> 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 To zoom into his face, oh, you see his facial no. expression change when he's like, I um, shouldn't say that. Uh, it'd probably be Frank Lampard, All right. actually. Like, nice, yeah. safe one All right. before I get drawn off the back. <laughs> I would, my, my three would have to be Bruce Lee, uh, Tupac, That's a good one. and Mike Tyson. That's a pretty good one, too. I mean, all three of them. Yeah. If you just, if you the, just, the, if you just the, said the, anyone famous, I don't think I'd really turn them down for dinner. It depends who's paying, but like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's good. Hey, ones. No one's paying. Kura Kura is a sponsor. Kura Kura. <laughs> just, but just eating beer. Uh, if you could bring back one extinct animal, what animal would it be? Oh, the Diplodocus, bro. All the day. What? Have you not seen those guys? The Diplodocus. <laughs> the dinosaur, man. <laughs> no idea. That if you don't know what a Diplodocus is, put up an image on the screen right now. You got to put it up. It's not me. I'm not editing it. Editors. You got to do it. I ain't Editors editing. are in. Yeah, Diplodocus. They, I just think they look pretty cool. Any dinosaur, to be honest, I think it would be fascinating. Yeah, if you just pulled out a random T-Rex. <laughs> just bringing one out to the party, bro. Like... I would have to be, <coughs> honestly, something recent that's being extinct that we can save. But they're already extinct, so we can't save. Yeah, but it's bringing back one extinct animal, so it would be them. But if you could save they're the dinosaurs, the most recent, bro, they're think the most about adapted. it. They're the most adapted to our current situation. We could get so I would say the Sumatran tiger. Keep Sumatran it local, tiger. Keep it local. Keep Respect it. Respect that. Yeah. But then we could also bring back dinosaurs and they can eat all of these dumb people that are trying to lead us. <sighs> we could bring up like a T-Rex and just chuck it in the White House. <laughs> or pterodactyl. <laughs> Derek dactyl. <laughs> bro, you should bring back the dodo. <laughs> uh, here we go. Kai and George's ship bandit. <laughs> <laughs> if you won a million pounds in the lottery, what are you doing with it, mate? What am I doing with a million? Uh, Bitcoin. Uh, no, I'm, I'm actually yeah, joking. Yeah. I know nothing That's about not Bitcoin. That's not a bad shout to be fair. At the moment, shout it's out a to good Bitcoin. idea. It's going to hit 35 to 50k. It's, a moment. Yeah, I think it's on the rise, 23 to 28 grand in the last couple, couple of days. I think shout out to Bitcoin. Honest answer would be I would try and invest it in some properties. Yeah, 100%. I think Real some, estate is a. Yeah. Um, if you have something up there. Real estate is where you want to go down yeah. in one sector of it. There's uh, there's nothing wrong with bricks and mortar. It's never going to go down, you know? For That's me, what I've always learned. charity is one sector automatically. Got to do. Yeah? Something good, though, because there's a lot of dodgy charities out there. But There is. If I but had I that much amount of money, I would have to off something like the lottery, not hard earned, which yeah. I will get to one day, by the way. But yeah. it would be charity. It would be real estate. And it would be building a dream house as well. Yeah, I mean, if you can get that with a million, a million doesn't go that far these Mate, days. what are you trying you know? to build? <laughs> well, I mean, like, my dream house would have a full, like, big derrick on the roof. I'd have maybe a couple football pitches in there, tennis court, couple bro. football pitches. Grass, clay, hard court. That's the dream house, Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? That's a dream. That is. So, Mr. Benson, I think time's running short. I think oh. this is a... We could carry on going all day, honestly, I feel like. But I feel like you will be back on for round two very, very soon. Yeah, I think we should pinpoint some of the key talking points in this podcast that yeah. we might not have addressed and we enough. Can, yeah, because we, and then we, we focus exactly. on that. There's been a few things been that could have gone. We can go into a lot more depth, yeah. 100%. No, we're only doing fun. this because we're on a time-bound schedule. Otherwise, we'll be going for hours. Yeah, thank that, you for having me, Kai. Fine. Hey, brother, anytime. Uh, shout out to Mr. George Benson. Yes, guys. All links in the description. <laughs> check him out on YouTube. Check him out on Instagram. I don't know if you want to see his face on Instagram as much, but yeah, Twitter, everything will be down below. It's been an amazing episode. I want to thank you personally, bro, for coming on. So I come over and shake your hand. <laughs> <laughs> What's this? <laughs>
<laughs> Look at this guy. <laughs> Don't follow him on Real anything. life Derek behavior over there. <laughs> That's what me and Kai do most of the time when we're together. We yeah. just mug each other off in the best way possible. As well as making business moves. Come on, keep it real. Always. But shout out to Mr. Benson. Shout out to Kura Kura Beer. First sponsor of the Kaizai episode podcast. It's a monumental Kaizai, moment. Kaizai, 10% off all beer cans. 20% off Kaizai on the brewery tour. Check it out. Link in description. Thank you, Mr. Benson. It's been an amazing episode. And Cheers, you will mate. be back on very soon because we can go over it on some, a lot more things that we didn't yeah, finish. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, have an amazing 2021, guys. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll give you a minute to do that. All the good stuff. Thank you very Happy much. Happy New Year. Take care and we're out. Derek. <laughs>